Greetings, Poké fans! Michael here. Real quick before the video gets started, just want to let you know I have been working on updating some of the perks on my Patreon page, such as giving access to a patron Discord server and giving out monthly blooper videos. So if you're interested in becoming a patron of mine, the link to my Patreon is down in the description below if you are interested. As many of you know, over the course of the past year, I have gotten very interested in shiny hunting in Pokemon. It's something that's very popular across the Pokemon community, and for me, it's gone from something that I never thought I had the patience to do, to something that has become the primary content of what I livestream. By the way, come out to one of my YouTube gaming livestreams sometimes, they're lots of fun. Because I shiny hunt so regularly, I've gotten pretty acquainted with what the shiny versions of most of the Pokemon look like. Many look extremely awesome, hence why we shiny hunt them. Others look pretty freaking stupid, and others look almost identical to their normal versions. Some look actually identical, like Regice. One of these is shiny, one of these is not. How dare! Because of all that, I thought it'd be fun to make a video discussing which shiny Pokemon colorings I dislike and how I would change them to suit my personal exquisite taste. I decided these entries based on which Pokemon species I like a lot, but I dislike their shiny colorings. In other words, this is not going to be a list of the top 10 worst shiny colorings in my opinion, since there are definitely worse shiny colorings out there, that I just don't care about as much because I don't really like the Pokemon itself. Like Regice. So be sure to leave a like on the video, comment below what Pokemon you think are gonna be on the list, and subscribe if you haven't already. And without further ado, here are the top 10 shiny Pokemon I would change. Number 10, Archeops. Most bad shinies, or at least shinies that look extremely similar to their normal form, come from Generation 5 and earlier. So gens 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The reason for that is that in those games, shiny coloring was determined by a color palette algorithm, not by intentional human design. As a result of that, that's why we have so many blue Pokemon that turn pink in their shiny form, and why we've ended up with so many shiny forms that look nearly identical to their regular forms. Archeops definitely falls into the latter category since the only changes are that its blue and green areas switch places and the rest of its body gets slightly darker. An untrained observer may see a shiny Archeops and not even realize that it's shiny. Hey Jubilee? Yeah. Before you start recording, will you come here and do me a favor real quick? Sure. Okay. Do you know which one of these is shiny? That one's shiny. You sure? Yeah. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was a 50-50 chance. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> I can see what happened. They switched the colors on the head and the feathers, but... Yeah. Man, that's f***ing disappointing. I just recorded this to use it in the video. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You tricked me! <laughs> I did I trick you. <laughs> Why didn't you have your lights on? My head was cut off. I didn't consider that ahead of time. <laughs> Hi! Archeops is my favorite fossil Pokemon, and I had a lot of fun using it back in my first ever playthrough of Gen 5 in my Pokemon White version. And so, I definitely think it deserves a better shiny. If I were designing shiny Archeops, I'd probably go with something like this. Lots of really bright, vibrant colors, which I think is one of the great parts of Archeops' design, except they get even more vibrant as a nod to the really vibrantly colored birds of the world that Archeops is an ancestor of. Number nine, Torterra. Torterra is one of my top 10 favorite Pokemon and my second favorite starter Pokemon behind only Sceptile since it was my first Pokemon I ever owned back in my first ever playthrough of Gen 4 all the way back when Pokemon Diamond came out. Unfortunately, its shiny is Torterrible. Turtwig and Grottle turn a really cool combination of teal and lime green coloring that looks really good. However, Torterra didn't get those colors, it just got a lime green filter slapped on it, and it looks really dull. I would have much preferred that it 
kept that teal and lime green color scheme since those vibrant bright colors are a big contrast to its normal coloring and I think it would look really good. Another color scheme I think would look great for an alternate shiny Torterra is a more autumnal theme with reddish orangish leaves and grassy areas and a deeper brown belly. Number 8. Reshiram and Zekrom Many of you are likely aware of my first encounter shiny Reshiram that I found about a month or so ago. But what you may not know is that right before I found it, I said this. Reshiram. Hmm. We could go for Reshiram, but its shiny is pretty lame. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know if I'm super into this. Yeah, I don't think I want to hunt Reshiram. I think I'd rather do. I think I'd rather do something else. But yeah, guys, I don't. I don't think I want to hunt Reshiram. I mean, I'll hunt it eventually. I just. I'm not in the, I'm not, it's a, it's a bad shiny. It's a super lame shiny. While I admittedly like shiny Reshiram more than I used to thanks to that god tier event in my life, I still think it deserves a better shiny since it's not much of a change from original Reshiram. Zekrom definitely deserves a better shiny as well since its changes are even harder to notice than Reshiram's. Clearly their shinies should be switching color schemes with Reshiram turning black with red eyes and Zekrom turning white with blue eyes. It fits perfectly since it still aligns with the yin yang theme and it would just look extremely cool. Much cooler than some mediocre neck bling. Number seven, Tropius. Tropius is another reptilian-ish. It's a dinosaur, so I guess it's a bird. Hmm. Tropius is another really cool grass dinosaur-like Pokemon that I just really like a lot, and also wish he was not so horrifically weak, dear god. In addition to suffering from the plight of trash stats, Tropius' shiny is also subpar. Like Torterra, it looks like someone just slapped a lime greenish colored filter on it, making it look like it's just perpetually cloaked in sunset lighting. Not a completely different colored creature. If I was designing Shiny Tropius, I would make it turn bright tropical colors, like a bag of wild berry skittles threw up on it. I like the idea of turning the fruit on its neck into a reddish pinkish color. I know bananas can't get that color, but like, it supposedly could grow all sorts of fruit, so... There you go. And then I also think the orange and cyan are kind of like citrus colors. And you know, it looks looks a little bit crazy, I'm not gonna lie, but I think it looks cool. Number six, Lantern. I have always liked Lantern. I think it's really cute, a very well-designed Pokemon, and I love the combination of water and electric. It's definitely the vastly more cool water and electric type over the washing machine. However, like every Pokemon on this list, its shiny is, uh, no bueno. You can really tell the difference between its shiny and regular form in the 2D sprites, and that makes me like the shiny form a bit more. But in the 3D models, you can barely notice a difference, because the colors are just less saturated. By the way, side note, I hope they fix that issue in the Switch games. The 3D models are all just so, they're just so desaturated with the colors, and I wish they'd make things more, you know, pop. If I was designing Shiny Lantern, I would like to see its yellow coloring turn a bright electric blue as a nod to LED lights versus incandescent lights. And then the rest of its body should turn a very deep blue or black as a nod to the deep ocean waters that anglerfish live in, thus transforming Lantern and this cute little lampfish into this intimidating creature of the deep. Okay, maybe not. It's still very cute, but... It would it'd be an attempt. Number five, Blaziken. I love all three Hoenn starters and think it's the best generation of starter Pokemon out of all of them. Partially due to nostalgia and partially because they just all look excellent. However, I'm not really a fan of any of their shiny forms, but of all three of those, I definitely think Blaziken got the shortest end of the stick because it looks like someone just turned down the brightness and turned up the contrast on regular Blaziken. Literally. Spot on. 
To improve Shiny Blaziken, I suggest that we go with the tried and true method that is guaranteed to make a starter Pokemon Shiny look extremely cool. Turning it black and red. This here is my Shiny Blaziken, and I realize it looks completely insane. It looks more like a vicious demon monster than a Pokemon. And that's what I like about it. Anyone wielding a Blaziken is a badass, but anyone wielding this Blaziken is clearly some sort of psychotic warlord murderer. And that's awesome. Number four, Crobat. <sighs> Guys, I love Crobat. I really do. It's so cool. Big improvement on Zubat and Golbat. It's my favorite poison type. But this, this is an abomination. Seriously, just look at that. Its body is primarily Pepto-Bismol pink and its wings are barf green. That has gotta be the tackiest color combination possible on anything. In the Sun and Moon Randomizer Shiny Race Nuzlocke series I did with A-Drive last fall, I had the pleasure of using a shiny Crobat on my team that was eggshell white with black wings, which looked really awesome and was definitely a massive improvement on normal shiny Crobat. However, I still think we could do better. This shiny Crobat that I came up with was inspired by swapping the color palettes of its eyes with the rest of its body. Normal Crobat is purple with green wings and has red and yellow eyes, but my shiny Crobat is the opposite. I love the color combination of red and yellow, and I also think the stark contrast between the warm colors of its body and the cool colors of its eyes makes a really nice combination, just like the original coloring of regular Crobat. But whatever changes that could be possibly made to shiny Crobat, whatever they are, Pretty much anything would be an improvement on Pepto-Bat. Number three, Talonflame. Talonflame is one of my favorite Pokemon and easily my favorite regional bird. And it's just such a cool Pokemon. Unfortunately, its shiny suffers the same problem that Torterra's and Tropius's do. It looks like someone just slapped a single color filter on it and that's all they did. This is extra disappointing since because Talonflame is a Gen 6 Pokemon, its shiny version was intentionally designed, not decided by an algorithm, so that's just even more disappointing that someone thought this was a good idea. To improve shiny Talonflame, I suggest turning it blue. For really, I don't have any other reason because I think this looks pretty cool. But also because you rarely see blue fire type Pokemon. In an ideal world, Shiny Talonflame here would have blue flames in all of its attacks instead of normal red ones, but unfortunately I think the only Pokemon that's going to get that luxury is Mega Charizard X. But a man can dream about a different Shiny Talonflame. Number two, Garchomp. Garchomp's Shiny is Garbage. It is nothing but a slightly desaturated Garchomp, and if you were to see a shiny Garchomp without a regular one to compare it to, there's a pretty solid chance a lot of people would just assume it was a regular Garchomp, and that is so frustrating. It is worthy to note though that shiny Mega Garchomp is bright pink, which is considering the fact that it's a vicious monster land shark beast of doom that's a Pretty comical irony, but I'm still not a huge fan. Garchomp's pre-evolution Gibble has a fantastic shiny that it unfortunately did not keep all the way through its evolutionary line. That is because Gibble has a different color scheme than Garchomp, so the algorithm swapped different colors, but regardless, it would have been really cool to see Gibble keep that color scheme all the way through its evolutionary line, resulting in this shiny Garchomp, which I think would look way better than regular shiny Garchomp. I also think shiny Garchomp would look really great with a primarily red color scheme to represent the blood of his victims. What? Garchomp is like viciousness incarnate. This makes sense. Number one, cast form. I love cast form so freaking much. It is 
easily the cutest Pokemon out there in my opinion, and I would love to have one as a pet in real life that would just sit on my shoulder and be adorable and change the weather when I wanted it to. Unfortunately, Castform has been absolutely shafted on so many things throughout the Pokemon universe. Number one, it's hopelessly weak. Number two, so many people make fun of it for looking like it has boobs. And number three, most relevant to this video, is that it's shiny is trash. Allow me to clarify. This is shiny cast form right here. Not bad, right? It's not excellent. It's not the best shiny I've ever seen, but it's by no means terrible. That's not what I'm referring to. I'm talking about the shiny forms of its various weather forms. Let's go through them. This is regular rain cast form. This is shiny. This is regular sun cast form. This is shiny. This is regular hail cast form. And this is shiny. Do you notice anything? Do you notice how they don't change at all? Cast forms weather forms do not have shinies. That is so upsetting, especially considering that every single Pokemon that has more than one form retains its shiny coloring throughout every single form. Except for Cast Form, which is bull sweat. Cast Form deserves better, so I made up some alternate colorings for its shiny weather forms. First, the sun form, I'd like to see it keep its warm colorings, but just kind of swap the locations around a bit. For its rain form, I'd like to see it get darker in color, almost become sort of an indigo type color to represent heavier rain. And for its hail form, I'd like to see it become less saturated and have a little bit of light blue coloring in there to represent how most ice type Pokemon's color schemes are primarily white and light blue. Regardless of how they're changed, cast forms, weather forms deserve shiny colorings, and this extremely adorable Pokemon really needs to stop being thrown under the bus. So there we have it. Those are the top 10 shiny Pokemon I would change. There's a lot of really bad shinies out there, but these 10 are definitely the ones that I'll be most excited to see a change happen. Although that's never going to happen. What did you think of this video? What do you think of my alternate colored shinies? What are some other shiny Pokemon you think should be different and how would you change them? Let me know down in the comments below! And if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I do all sorts of fun Pokemon videos all the time that I am sure you will enjoy. And don't forget, if you are interested in becoming a patron of mine, make sure you check out the link down in the description below to check out the new updated perks. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans. Gotta catch them all! Bull sweat.